Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. I am super excited to bring you guys a requested video. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know that I actually was very afraid to do buttonholes and I've been sewing for years and years and years. And it was simply because I hadn't gotten down the process of doing buttonholes and it was just always iffy on the machine that I had. I've become much more acquainted with doing buttonholes so I feel confident in giving you guys a tutorial about how I overcame my fear of doing buttonholes. So let's get right into it. I am going to be showing you guys two different methods of doing buttonholes. I'm gonna show you a manual because I did, when I wasn't comfortable with doing buttonholes on my sewing machines, I did a manual buttonhole for many years and I'm gonna show you how to do a one step buttonhole on my brother strong and tough. You'll need to do maybe a little bit of research to find out whether you have a one-step buttonhole or a four-step buttonhole. And let me explain what that is. Um, a buttonhole has four sides like a rectangle. A one-step buttonhole, when you press down on your foot pedal and you activate the buttonhole, it will go through the whole process of all four lengths of your buttonhole. If you have a four-step buttonhole, it only goes each step at a time. So each leg of your buttonhole at a time. Um, of course, like I said in a previous video, if you are a beginner or for really anybody, you know, try to get that sewing machine with the one-step buttonhole, it'll just save you a lot of time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find my buttonhole foot. If your sewing machine does buttonholes, then it should have come with a buttonhole foot. If it did not, you can do a quick search on on Amazon and you'll be able to find one and I will definitely put a link in the description box for one that I found. Here's what a standard buttonhole foot looks like and mine is a snap-on because that's what my sewing machines take and actually all of my sewing machines take the same type of foot but if you have a sewing machine that has a different attachment then this will look different for your sewing machine but most of them have an adjustable thing in the back where you can put the button and it automatically sizes your buttonhole for you. Before you attach the foot you can take the button that you're going to be attaching to your garment and put it in the little space where the button sits and close it so that it fits snug. Then you can attach your buttonhole foot. I always like to take my thread and tuck it underneath in order, you know, just to make sure it doesn't pull back out of the needle while I'm trying to sew. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers and we'd love to have you as part of the Blueprint DIY family. So definitely share this video so everyone knows all the amazing stuff going on here. The next thing you'll want to do is find your buttonhole stitch. On most machines, it is number one. I know a lot of computerized machines have multiple buttonholes, but a standard buttonhole will most likely be number one. And so you want to change your dial so that it is on number one. Next, you'll need to adjust your stitches. And normally it's with dials. On some machines, it has a dial on the front, but with this machine, all the dials are at the top. And this is the tension. It dictates how tight the stitch is. This is the stitch width. And when we're doing zigzag stitches, this is the one that's gonna be very important. And then this is the stitch length. These are all pretty important when you are making buttonholes. First, you'll want to turn that dial to how wide you want those zigzags to go back and forth for your buttonhole. And normally I put mine on about six or seven, you know, pretty much the highest it can go. And then for your stitch width, you'll want to turn it to in between zero and F. And this dictates how closely those zigzags are together. Um, because I just really don't like for my stitches to bunch up and mess up the buttonhole, I very rarely put it on zero. I'll normally put it in between F and zero. And then for my tension, I normally leave it the same as whatever it was when I was sewing the garment, whatever garment I was sewing. And for me, that's typically in between two and three. Next, you wanna make sure that you have your buttonholes marked and spaced properly. There are tools that you can purchase that will evenly space your buttons and your buttonholes. If you don't have that tool, you want to measure from the top of one to the next 
top of the other one. You can use, like I use a sliver of soap, or of course you can always use pins as well. So if I'm making these three inches apart, so that means I'll go to six inches for the next one, and on and on, depending on how many buttons I need. If you have a one-step buttonhole, what you want to do is find your buttonhole engager. If you pull this thing down, right there, and in some machines, all you have to do is pull it down, in some machines you also need to push it back. And if you hear that snap, I'll do it again. Pull it down, snap. Once this is engaged, the very next time you press on your foot pedal, it will be making a buttonhole. So let's put our fabric underneath. And there are some little notches there that can help you line it up with the pin. And once you put the foot down, you can take the pin out. Once everything is set, you can go ahead and press your foot pedal. With a one-step buttonhole, you'll want to press that foot pedal as fast or as slow as you feel comfortable, but don't stop until it finishes. Once it gets back to the beginning and it does a few more stitches to lock it in place, you're done. A perfect buttonhole. All right, so let me share the part with you that used to confuse me. When you're doing another buttonhole, after you've just done an amazing buttonhole, you're rejoicing, you're happy, because you've done it right, and then you get to the second one, and you go ahead and try to do that one. You have it lined up and everything, and you're ready. You have the pin out, and you're ready to press your foot pedal, and then you get trash. This is the problem. The buttonhole lever has to be pushed back again. And you need to do that every single time you start a new buttonhole. For computerized machines, maybe it's not the same, but for most mechanical machines, that is exactly what you need to do. So now that we've done that, we can do another perfect buttonhole. All right, so let's change that zigzag stitch to like five and let's take it to F and see what happens. Just so you guys know that it does matter, these dials do matter. All right, so let's compare the two. As you can see, this is the one I just did after I changed the settings. You can see that the zigzags are further apart and they are the width of them is shorter as opposed to this one where you're not gonna get as much fray and you have a much better chance of that buttonhole staying. So I just wanted to let you guys know if you're having trouble with your buttonholes, just play around with those settings and you know you should be able to make it work. And then also if you're using thicker fabrics like denim, you may have to go to something lighter like this, especially if you're using a thicker thread. Some machines like this brother have a harder time doing something like this with those thick threads they don't like it at all all right so now let's try to do a manual buttonhole you will need to measure your buttonholes for this one I will make a mark there and I will make a mark there not too much bigger but not right at the size of the buttonhole I have just my regular presser foot on here this is the one that came with this particular sewing machine it is plastic because it moves smoother over the fabric which actually is helpful for sewing buttonholes if you're going to do it manually all right then we can put our presser foot right on top of that line first thing I'm going to try to do is the part that goes across both and then I'll adjust the zigzag stitch to make it smaller so that I can do the length and then go back up to the highest, which is a seven to do the end and then go back down to about a three. All right, when you do this particular one, you don't necessarily wanna have it on F. You probably want it more like on one or in between one and F, just because it may get stuck when you're trying to sew. All right, so let's sew the first leg. And we can go backwards on that just to make sure it's set. Now, we've changed the zigzag stitch to about three. Press our back button and do that leg. Then we wanna turn the zigzag stitch back to seven. Go backwards. You wanna make sure your needle is on the right side. All right, so let's take a look at this. It may be crude, but if your sewing machine is, you know, doesn't have a buttonhole maker or you're just so frustrated with it, then 
I just want you guys to see that you can do it manually. As long as you can do zigzag stitches, you can go ahead and make a buttonhole. And as you guys may know, here on this channel, I do a lot of upcycling. If you're interested in upcycling classes, I do have a once a month upcycling class for my highest level of membership. So hit that join button to learn more about that. And I also have a free Facebook group that you can join. It's a group of other positive upcyclers that help each other when they get stuck and you can share your before and afters and everybody will cheer for you. The link is in the description below. All right, so lastly, let's talk about how we open up our buttonholes. Um, I don't know if you're like me, then you have tried to open up a buttonhole and you overshot it or you cut through your stitches. It is no fun for anyone. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of tips that my mom actually taught me the last time she was here. We did a live video and she taught me these tips and they've been helpful. So when you're getting ready to open open up your buttonhole. If you're going to do it with a seam ripper, make sure that you add a pin to the top of the buttonhole, not past it because you don't want to cut past it. You want to put the pin in front of where the end of the buttonhole is. Then you can slip in your sharp. It needs to be sharp because if you have to push this too hard, you're probably going to push it in the wrong direction. So you want to be careful not to push it this way or that way but you can go ahead and gently <laughs> ease your seam ripper up and there you go. I haven't cut any threads that should not have been cut. And then once you trim these a little bit, you can also apply some fray check right to the inside threads so that you don't get any more fraying of these threads inside here. And of course you can also fold your buttonhole in half and just snip it. The problem with this is you have to make sure that you have really sharp scissors and you have to make sure that that buttonhole is exactly lined up because if it's not, then you're going to cut through your thread. If you get through it a little bit, you can go ahead and just snip it, snip it, snip it. I think that's what small those small little scissors are for, sewing scissors, which I don't happen to have any, but maybe that's the next thing I should order. And then the same thing would be true. You can go ahead and just trim those out just a little bit and then apply some fray check to make sure that it doesn't fray. So there you go. Now you can do perfect buttonholes every time. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely let me know in the comments if you were afraid to do buttonholes like me and if you feel like this video gave you a little bit more confidence to try again and really get those buttonholes perfected. All right, so I have a ton of other videos for you to watch right here and if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!